The Who Settled the West, a Bobby Common book, part of the Life in the Old West series. The Early Europeans. The first Europeans to settle in the West were the Spaniards. Their colony, which started in the 1500s, was called New Spain. It covered territories that are now Texas, Mexico, New Mexico, Arizona, California, and Florida. For many years, the Spaniards were very powerful, and New Spain was the largest colony in North America. Spanish Missions Spain was a Roman Catholic country. Roman Catholics are Christians who belong to the Roman Catholic Church. Spanish priests called missionaries came to New Spain to convert or change the religious beliefs of the Native Americans. They set up villages called missions. The mission buildings were made of the same materials as Pueblos. Native Americans who converted were called neophytes. Life at the Mission Neophytes learned to speak Spanish and dressed in European clothing. They prayed many times during the day. Many neophytes grew tired of their new life, but the missionaries were reluctant to let them leave. They were afraid the neophytes would forget about Christianity if they left the mission. The missionaries also depended on the neophytes to farm the land and work around the mission. Birth of the ranch. The Spaniards also set up ranches where they raised the horses and cattle they brought with them from Spain. They used the cattle's hide to make leather. The tallow or fat of cattle was used to make candles and soap. The Spaniards taught the Native Americans how to ride horses, herd cattle, and hunt with guns. The fur traders. Many Europeans who lived in the West were involved in the fur trade. These trappers and hunters known as mountain men traveled into the mountains in search of wild animals. By the time the settlers arrived, few bears, cougars, and other large animals were left. Some mountain men made a living guiding settlers to their new homesteads. The mountain men transported the, uh, their furs to trading posts by canoe. Hudson's Bay Company. The Hudson's Bay Company was a fur trading business in North America. It was founded by the British government, who owned most of the territories in Canada. The company had trading posts all across northern North America. At these posts, trappers and hunters traded beaver, deer, bear, wolf, and other furs for food and supplies. When the early settlers came to the West, some of them also got involved with the fur trade. Fort Edmonton in Canada was an early Western fur trading settlement. Was that that you're asking for? Settlers from the East. By the 1800s, the European colonies were becoming independent. In 1776, the United States became a country. Colonists in New Spain formed Mexico in 1821. Canada's colonies united in 1867. What a deal! During the early 1800s, the French were busy fighting wars in Europe. France did not have enough soldiers to protect its colony. The country also needed money. France's land in North America, which was called the Louisiana Territory, included the Mississippi River. This river was a popular transportation route. In 1803, American ambassadors went to France to buy a couple of French-owned seaports in North America. Instead, they brought the they bought the entire Louisiana Territory from France for $15 million. This doubled America's size overnight. The Louisiana Purchase, 1803. After the United States purchased Louisiana, the country was nearly as large as New Spain. During the 1800s, American colon... American... America claimed the northern section of New Spain as well as the southern half of Oregon Territory. The New Western Ranches. When people in the east heard about the new land, they headed west. There were also free cattle available. There were also free, free cattle available. The cattle that the Spaniards had bought. The cattle that the Spaniards had brought to North America hundreds of years ago had multiplied and were roaming wild. Many people set up cattle ranches and sold the cattle for their beef. The American ranchers learned how to raise cattle from the vaqueros. The vaqueros were Mexican cowboys who lived in areas that were once part of New Spain. Many vaqueros worked at the new ranches. Ranches were popular in the West. The Race West. People in the United States and Canada became more interested in the West. They heard stories about rich ranchers, huge areas of unused land, and gold finds. 
The two countries grew fearful that they might lose their land to each other or Mexico. They needed citizens to go and occupy the land in order to keep it. Both governments offered cheap land to anyone who claimed it, and the race to settle the West began. The Western gold rushes attracted thousands of people. Prospectors searched for gold alone or in groups. Although most prospectors expected to return home after they found gold, many settled in the West. The Mormon Migration The Mormons are a religious group who lived in Illinois in the early 1800s. Their religion was not liked by others, and they were often attacked for their beliefs. In 1847, their leader, Brigham Young, decided the Mormons should move 1,300 miles or 2,092 kilometers west to Salt Lake City, an isolated place where they hoped to practice their religion in peace. Young left with 144 Mormons in search of the valley. Some pulled heavy carts by hand because they could not afford mules, oxen, or covered wagons. Eventually, over 3,000 Mormons arrived in what is now Utah and began building a city. Despite having poor farmland, Salt Lake City became a thriving Mormon community. African American settlers. Between the 1600s and 1865, many African Americans were slaves on plantations in the southern United States. Plantations were large farms that grew one type of crop, such as cotton or tobacco. Americans sailed to Africa and captured people to be their slaves. Many Africans were separated from their families when they were brought to North America. Slaves were forced to work long hours without pay and were kept against their will. They were beaten if they disobeyed orders. Escaping Slavery Slavery was not legal everywhere in North America. Canada and most of the northern states of America did not practice slavery. Many slaves risked their life attempting to escape to the north. If an owner caught a slave who had tried to escape, he beat the slave severely. Many slaves were killed by their owners after trying to run to freedom. Heading West Besides the north, another place that offered safety to slaves was the west. Slavery was not legal in the West, and African Americans could find paid work there. Some escaped to ranches and became cowboys. After slavery became illegal, African Americans left the southern states in large numbers. Many started their own businesses in western towns. Others bought land and set up farms. Many African American families lived peacefully in the West. Moving to Canada, hundreds of slaves had escaped to Canada during the years of slavery in the southern states. Canada provided opportunities for many African Americans. Some made a new life for themselves as farmers and businessmen in the Canadian West. They brought with them the skills they had learned as slaves on the southern plantations. Southern plantations were terrible places for African Americans to live. The 13th, the 13th Amendment, passed by the United States government in 1865, made slavery illegal and allowed African Americans to migrate to the West. Even though they were free, African Americans often encountered hostility from their neighbors. Prejudice did not stop them from moving to the West, however, where many, pros where many prospered. This African American family built a sod house on the prairie. Some members of the family worked as slaves before slavery became illegal. This man is a cook on a Western cattle on a western cattle drive, many African Americans found work as cowboys. John, John Ware was a well-known Canadian cowboy. He owned a cattle ranch near Red Deer River. Traveling over land. The early set of the early settlers of the West traveled in covered wagons pulled by mules or oxen. As many as 200 wagons formed a wagon train. Although some trains were smaller, wagon trains followed. Rough trails beaten into the ground by wagons that had traveled before them. The trip from east to west took several months and was very difficult. A well-organized wagon train could travel up to 20 miles, 32 kilometers a day. Wagon trains that ran into bad weather or difficult terrain sometimes took a couple weeks to travel 50 miles, 80 kilometers. A long, harsh journey. Conditions on the wagon trains were harsh, and settlers were exposed to extreme weather. Heavy rains, flooded rivers, 
making them impossible to cross, and turned trails into thick mud. Food and water often ran out, and many people starved or became dehydrated in the intense heat. Travelers were exhausted by the long days and difficult conditions. People became so weak that diseases spread quickly. Without doctors, settlers found it difficult to help the sick, and many people died. Take the train. Travel improved dramatically with the completion of cross-country railway lines. By the late 1800s, both the United States and Canada had long lines of track stretching into the West. First-class cars were like expensive hotels on, wheel, on wheels. Even third-class passengers traveled in comfort compared to a wagon train journey. The Western railroads cost a lot of money to build, but they quickly proved their worth. They carried thousands of settlers to their new homes and helped people populate the West. After hearing many horror stories about traveling by wagon train, everyone was eager to take the train. The, the transcontinental lines completed in the United States and Canada were a great source of pride. 